So we come back and I guess it's time for us to dive into session three and our two speakers are already lining up. So I'm Wei from an uh, Institute of Assistant Biology. And so I'm gonna chair this session. I guess uh, after exploring a range of state-of-art spatial omics technologies and a computational method for spatial data analysis in our first two sessions. So we are gonna talk about the practical applications um, of those spatial multiomics tools in this session particularly focusing on the cancer biology and the clinical oncology research. So our previous speakers actually set a, a, a solid foundation for various spatial omics tools and the computational approach. So, and, and we are running a bit, a little bit late, so I'm gonna be very briefly, give a, 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 a very brief introduction of the applications, and then I'm gonna pass through the speakers. So, and actually, if we look back, the term spatial omics first emerged from a paper published in 2012. Although I, I, I know like uh, different speakers previously gave different like landscapes, like uh, landmarks of when the spatial omics actually emerged. But actually in 2012, the, uh, uh, if, you, if you look into the uh, PubMed, and there's a paper, they use some like self-fractionation uh, approach to do some, you know, uh, uh, like proteomic or transistor measurement of certain cellular parts, and then they map them back to form a, a, a kind of a spatial omics type of approach. But for the first six years uh, since then, literature on this topic was very sparse, barely hitting double digit. But ever since the spatial omics tools being commercially available in 2019, either the 10X Wisdom or, or Nanostring and DSP, so we have witnessed witnesses uh, exponential growth in research. We are nearly a thousand papers published in 2023 alone. And the majority of these papers are actually uh, related to cancer research. So why this surge in interest, especially in cancer research? And the answer lies on the complex nature of cancer itself. So we know that uh, the significant uh, heterogeneity across different cancer cells and the intricate tumor immune microenvironment and actually play a, 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 a critical role in cancer progression and therapy response. So consequently, uh, cancer research is, uh, has a natural call to these spatial omics tools to unravel uh, these complexities. They can help answer pivotal questions like uh, how cancer subclones you know, evolve over time or how the tumor immune microenvironment uh, influence the, the, the immune surveillance and the therapy responses. So the application of these spatial omics tools actually uh, extend uh, beyond cancer research and to other uh, domains as well. So it's, they, they are revolutionizing our understanding of these complex organs and the diseases such as like mapping the spatial organization of brain cell types and their relationships with brain functions and, and some neurodegenerative diseases. We're studying like human kidneys to distinguish um, between like healthy and injured cell state within their uh, native spatial architecture. So in this session, we are fortunate to have a both cancer biologist and the clinician scientist to share their first first hand use experience and insight and the challenges uh, with those groundbreaking tools. So please join me in welcoming uh, Dr. Katie Campbell from UCLA School of Medicine and Dr. Sandro Sandagata from Harvard Medical School. Our first speaker will be uh, Dr. Katie Campbell, and she's gonna talk about the applications of these spatial mixed tools um, in immuno-oncology research. So I guess if you have any questions, please use the Q&A and type in the Q&A and we are gonna go over those questions later. Thank you. Thank you.